How will I pay for my family's needs? How will I manage to work day and night? Can I still take care? Ladies and gentlemen, these are some of many questions that most teachers ask themselves every day, worried about their future and what's to come. Dear attendees, honorable jury opponents, greetings. Before we dive onto today's moment of subject, allow me to give you a quick definition of the important terms. According to Carl's dictionary, the teacher strike is when teachers stop working for a period of time, usually in order to try to get better pay or conditions for themselves. Now, a legitimate response means a reaction or an answer that is acceptable according to the law. And to get over with the definition part, the term education system generally refers to public and private schooling. However, during today's debate, we're only going to be discussing the public system. My house consists of the Deputy Prime Minister, who will cover the mismanagement of the government and the blame against teachers, the member of the government, who will address uh, the conditions of the teachers and the countryside, and finally, the, rep, the government rep will uh, shed the spotlight on some issues in the primary law. Now, let's get down to business. The teacher strike in Morocco is a legitimate response to an addressed issues in the education system. Indeed, it is. Dear audience, let me remind you that I'm standing here in front of you today not only to defend my house's position, but also to defend the Moroccan public sector teachers that are left unheard, ignored, and deprived from some of their fundamental rights, especially with the emergence of the new statute of the Ministry of National Education. And I really hope you all took the time to read the new reform to see how unfair and devouring it is to teachers. Teachers that play a significant and major role in society. In fact, they are its backbone. Thanks to them, countries are able to further develop economically and socially and yet we, or should I say, the Ministry of Education won't listen to them. According to the website Hespers English, unions claim that the Ministry of Education undermined the collaborative approach, and unilaterally reversed several agreements they concluded with the Ministry regarding the new fundamental system. The parliamentary advisor for the Moroccan Labour Union team stated, We did not sign the basic system. We signed the January 14 joint statement outlining the principles of the fundamental system. The Ministry of Education proceeded to pass the system and take it for approval without consulting the participating unions, nor considering the observations we provided. Wow, really? Backtracking from agreements without taking into consideration the opinion of the people truly involved in this matter? But that's not the rest of it. Dear audience, did you know that teachers are the least paid state employees among all, even though teaching is known to be one of the toughest occupations? Shocking, isn't it? Well, to bring you closer to the truth, allow me to give you a living example. A teacher is paid approximately $5,200 in his first year of employment, while a nurse receives a salary of 6,700 dirhams, knowing that they both have the same public, that they both have the same bachelor's degree and start from the same scale of public function. How unjust is that? I mean, the teacher's profession is as important as any other. So I see no valuable reason to win the wooden strike. Thank you. <laughs> Strikes, demonstrations, crowded streets, furious teachers, chaotic a pure mess in our modern society. But most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna make it nice and short. Morocco is not going any further that way. A very cheerful good morning, dear attendees, honorable educators, honorable teachers coming here to watch us, um, fellow government members. Now let me clear a path instead of blessing your ears with all the futilities you'll be hearing for our beloved opponents. How are we going to solve an issue by creating another one? Contradictory, isn't it? Don't you all think it's unfair, unbalanced, and totally shameful to bring harm to students just in favor of their educators? I advise you, my dear audience, to take a look at the country we live in and the society we live with and from an external perspective and watch how these protesting ways are a perfect recipe for an ultimate fail. 
problem upon problem upon problem building up like a stack of dead bodies in a vicious war and you're telling me the only way to solve all these issues is by protesting in the most pointless ways to ever exist ladies and gents there's an outstanding code that i deeply appreciate from the bottom of my heart that comes like good communication is the bridge between confusion and clarity Enough communication between the two members will solve everything and will put everything back in place, facing all the teachers' issues that they're facing. And um, there are, uh, sorry, <laughs> good communication is the bridge between confusion and clarity. Enough communication between the two members will put everything back in place, will determine and deal with the issues the teacher staff is facing, in addition to putting everything back in place. You know, the whole situation immediately makes me think of a game of tug of war. On the other hand, we have teachers who are screaming and shouting and filling up the streets with all their noise and their protesting ways that are a perfect recipe for an ultimate fate, just as I stated earlier. And you know who the rope represents? You know, the students, obviously. The students that need stu studies, that need to study in order to achieve their dreams. I couldn't help but picture a toddler rather than a conscious and a ch cultivated citizen, a spoiled little kid who's throwing tantrum and making a huge fuss because he didn't get his soul wanted rights. Childish, immature, but it's a phase though, and they will grow out of it. I mean, I hope. It's obviously for you, your opponents, to stand the, with the educators, to defend the educators' rights and protest in such ways. It's easy for you to take a look at the unrealistic side of the story. It's easy for you to, to defend the side of the story without returning the coin. It's easy for you to be utterly arrogant. Talking to our future generation, my dear crowd, to our future engineers, doctors, lawyers, engineers, and especially teachers. Please, please keep your word about willing to do anything to advance the educational system and not weaken it. Please, take your, please keep your promise about willing to do anything to develop our country and not weaken it. You know, whenever I come to think about your position, my dear government members, two questions pop in my head. Firstly, what exactly do you need to come back to reality? And secondly, what is it about your point of view that is so meaningless, problematic, and filled with nonsense? Thank you. Chaotic? Where? Problematic? Excuse me, how can you say no when that according to the conviction 2000, uh, 2000, 288 of the convict of the constitu of the Moroccan constitution say that strikes cannot happen without the permission of authorities, and it happened. Dear audience, respected judges, opponents, greetings. We're all aware that the problem our public teaching our public teaching system suffer from today wasn't born yesterday. It's already been seven years, yet our lovely government hasn't found a solution to end it. But instead, it's the teachers themselves who undergo the consequences of ignoring it. Dear audience, would you like to hear a joke? It goes like, the Moroccan government aims to cure and develop its education system while the teachers have been suffering for years. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? The, uh, the teacher strike is a legitimate response to such an address issues. How? Let me explain to you all what's actually happening with the help of the websites English Has Press, Moroccan Pants, and the uh, Car Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. So, in the, process, on the, in the process of developing the education system, the Ministry of Education offered the opportunity to get employed as a public teacher to more than 70,000 of graduate teachers in 2016, but then realized after three years that to manage the whole, uh, the total education the, but to satisfy the total education needs, they had to take up 34% of the state budget, which equals 6.8 of the GDP cents for, for, uh, for gross domestic product, which was definitely not beneficial, ne not benefit, neither for the country's development nor the government members' good. Oh, 
I mean uh, education development. So, to get rid of this huge number of deceived teachers, the ministry offered them to sign a contract, thinking they will benefit from the same rights as the integrated teachers. But instead, they got shocked by the latter decision to put in an addendum to the first contract without consulting the second part of the deal, the contractual teachers, who are the most striking today. The accepted. Uh, well, my uh, the cover the member of the government will answer this. Uh, oh, sorry, the prime minister answered this, saying that the unions did not sign for that. Uh, please pay more attention. So, as I was saying, the teachers considered this not only a step to their backs, but also a blatant and unlawful violation of the first contract, and that by giving them off to the uh, to the local academic institutions, which are not part of the part of the Ministry of Education with which they signed the contract. <sighs> Horrible, isn't it? Uh, and dear audience and opponents, before saying that the teachers are doing all of this just for money, let me remind you again that it's not their fault, but it's the mismanagement of the government who led to this. And please, just know that all occupations as important as teaching should not be based on a fixed term contract. Just imagine a sudden cut in teaching. What generation would we be leading? And please know that all Moroccans have the right to be integrated into the public teach into the public sector as they meet the requirements according to the Moroccan Constitution uh, and the uh, organic law of the employees of the Ministry of Education. Thank you. Yes, Deputy Prime Minister, chaos, a pure mess. Don't raise your voice, please improve your arguments. We are here to talk about the chaos. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the right side of the house. My name is Ryan Endeli, and at the peak of my portfolio, I am a student, a student who finally got a chance to defend other students, to defend the human rights, and overall defend the growth of this nation. The teacher's strike is a legitimate answer to unaddressed issues within the educational system. Reading this statement, I don't see the word students, nor a reason for them to be sanctioned. And you guys don't seem blind to me to ignore that you are defending a point that is putting 7 million students out on the streets, wishing to get an education in order to survive in this crucial world. Well, let me get you in a picture. I like to see this as a conflict between the government and teachers, as two parents arguing and an innocent son is absorbing all the damages. The reason why I didn't call them collateral damages is because there was a way and there is an actual way to defend and to prohibit this chaos in a right way. Today, my concern isn't why did the government chose to set some new rules or not, if the teachers' rights are, respect, are respected or not. But the, the purpose of, of our debate today is you, as students, and how inhuman is the way teachers took action. And how inhuman is the way teachers took action. You might say this guy is living a dream. How do you expect, him, how do you expect for teachers' right to be respected other than a legitimate strike? Well, dear government, let me ask you a question first. Before going any further, is this teacher even qualified to talk, whereas this teacher is leaving crucial statistics behind him? The, the program International Students Assessment stated that 10% of teachers only have a master's degree, and only 65% of teachers have, have a, a teaching certification certificate, and only 22% of them have completed a one year or more a one year or more uh, training program i'm sorry as i said i am here to defend the human rights and so let's take this from a human point of view how do i expect this teacher how do i expect this teacher to defend his rights other than a with a legitimate strike. 
Well, dear government, let me take you to a journey in a world where problems are solved in the right way. A world where when teachers feel injustice, they, they complete their tasks towards students. And once done, they book it wherever they want, they deal with their problems however they want, but they don't leave any victims behind, such as students. And then, and only then, I will fully support you to wear an armband saying no to the new laws. This statement is supported by many teachers within our honorable school, at the head of them, Madame Dedushi. And as I said, if there isn't one solution, there are many. You can all, you, we can always process with the most legitimate way which is the way we are discussing our debate today, communication. Communication, dear audience, this, this, uh, the government stated that he was ready to discuss and to find an adapted solution in order to find common good within our society. I don't really believe how can one of you stand here defending a point that is putting students out on the streets while you are going to finish the, this debate and go back to your warm class and learn your lessons as if you are the only students within our school and our Moroccan society. Thank you. Um, Deputy Leader of Opposition, uh, we attack ideas, not teachers. And to not throw out students in the street, we should handle the teachers' matter. And you said about qualifications. The qualifications of teachers is the thought of the government, not teachers. And you said at the end uh, that we will come up to our warm, uh, warm classrooms. We're talking about public schools, not private. Thank you. Greetings. Teachers in Morocco have expressed their deep dissatisfaction with this recently implemented law, which they consider unfair and detrimental to their professions. They argue that the law fails to address long-standing issues in the educational sector. Among their concerns are the lack of salary increases and full promises and bonuses and benefits and the unequal treatments of teachers. They argue that the law fails to address long-standing issues in the educational sector, exacerbating tensions and highlighting glaring injustices. The teachers have already tried different ways to convey their needs, but weren't heard by anyone, so they are left with no other solution than striking in different Moroccan cities. According to the Moroccan news, it is more than 90% of teachers. Yes. I am standing here in front of you today to talk about those teachers that teach in countryside and deep in mountains. From what I heard and what I saw, it is so sad and, and unbelievable at the same time. According to a teacher interview in Morocco World News, the classroom is everything but a class. Do you know that 70% 70, 70 of teachers there don't have a house or a room where they can stay in? So the only solution that they could come up with is dividing the classroom in two parts, where they teach and where they live. <laughs> Just tell me, where are those values that our dear ministry defend all time? Today, my role is to enlighten you about things you don't see or maybe choose to ignore. If you hear that there's a whole school in the village, let me tell you that there's only two classrooms or even one in it. And do you know that a classroom contains all level from primary to middle school? How can a single teacher teach all of them? And sometimes all subjects taken. Just talk, just talk, I'm here on you. Please, 15 seconds. If it's not the unions who agreed for the, the basic new system, who As my Prime Minister said, they did sign for the January 14th. So Shaki Bumusa, like, made a trick to them. Thank you. And who opponent, who opposed this idea? Do you think that this is fair and logical? Us Moroccans who value fairness and the idea of fair play, if we went with your ideas that teachers shouldn't try to have their rights, let me tell you that that will lead to the downfall of whole Morocco, and now we can see it through the educational system. How can a teacher work in those conditions? And now that we have this formula law, is this, it is even worse. 30 hours per week with the supplementary hours and the obligatory of activities without expecting
often arise in their salary which is way too small to cover their monthly expenses knowing the rising cost of living that Moroccan citizens suffer from nowadays. According to Law 12 of the Educational Minister, teachers' demand is the need of the government. Dear audience and opponents, can you hear me now? According to Law 12 of the Educational Minister, teachers' demands are the needs of the government. Do you know that we wouldn't be facing those problems today if this particular law was respected? Yeah, we, clearly, we can clearly see that it is of no use. Opponents, can you tell me why couldn't Shakib bin Musa raise their salaries? I'll answer before you do so. According to him, before that this primary law is out, he said in the parliament, the fund of active teachers is up to 80 billions. Okay, thank you. It is 2020. It is 2023, and the echoes of such a powerful movement still ring in, still ring out in the corridors and classrooms of Morocco. The strike made headlines with voices highlighting the demands and struggles of educators. However, among the chaos, appearances can be deceiving. Today, I invite you to break free from the bubble and explore the aftermath of the teacher strike, teacher strike in Morocco. Buckle up because the truth is not what it seems like at first glance. First, the strike disrupts the learning process which leads to potentially school closures and fewer teachers in classroom, such as missing episodes of your favorite TV show and you find it hard for you to catch up. Students find themselves falling behind, which is far from ideal. Furthermore, the strike affects, affects the students' mentality and overall well-being, provoking increased anxiety, leading them to worry about their educational future. Um, and as we dig deeper, we must take in consideration the economic consequences. The strike affects various sectors that take in consideration a functional educational system which affects the future jobs of students that are falling behind which raise concerns about the financial consequences for individuals in our country. Plus, these, these strikes added a burden to, to parents. They, know, they now have to adjust their work schedule, schedules and distur in disturbing their daily routine. Lastly, the disruption of crucial exams and a graduation ceremony which is treating their academic progress. Thank you. Deputy Leader of the Opposition, you said you defend the human rights, so we can understand that teachers are not human rights. Uh, then uh, the, the member of the Opposition, you said that you're here to defend the human, oh, excuse me, the Deputy Leader of the Opposition, you said you're here to defend the human rights. Please ex uh, explain your arguments more next time. Now, to start, I want you all to take a moment and imagine yourselves in a position or in a situation where you're obliged to, uh, where you're obliged to work your shoulders off for long hours, using up your full energy. And, and you're supposed or you're obliged to work and to, uh, do, uh, to do tasks that you're not supposed to be doing, that's not even included in your monthly payment. Dr. Lynch had said the hard work always pays off, but I don't think it is the case here. Now, according to the situation I've just addressed, please choose the right decision from these two choices. A, do nothing and stay calm, or B, do it the right way, go on a strike to speak your truth out, to awaken minds, to awaken a whole nation full of no one, the people who support the House of Opposition's motion. I see heads not into option B, good job. Actually, in addition to filling teachers' schedules with the mandatory tasks they're not supposed to be doing, long teaching hours have always been an issue in Morocco. And today, this is enforced without any significant increase in their monthly payment. <laughs> now, Please wake up. This entails a massive burden on our educators. For how long are we going to keep ignoring this? 
Our teacher is also supposed to remain quiet. Any reasonable person who's, uh, who's dealing with uh, professional concerns or with imposed professional concerns will speak the truth out. And we related strikes to law because of the Article 9 of the 2011 Moroccan Constitution, which gives teachers the right to speak their, con their concerns and guarantees them the right to speak or uh, the, the guarantees them the right to peaceful assembly, association, and expression. If these strikes won't address teachers' issues, then why are they mentioned in the Moroccan law? Now, in 2021, Press Confidences hosted an interview with the head of the government, in which he stated, and I quote, our priorities are the education and the students. And in order to achieve these developmental goals, we must highly pay teachers. And then, this Monday, November 13th, he promised of a raise of two... Taken. Please, 15 seconds. Um, so, how is it possible for the unions to vote or to agree for something and then in the new basic system it comes something way different from what they agreed for? Well, that's with our position. You must answer that question because the unions are not supporting teacher strikes and they are not giving them their rights first. Thank you. Uh, this Monday, November 13th, he promised of a raise of 2,500 dirhams in their salaries. It's a commitment, he said. But <laughs> apparently, neither the teachers nor the students benefit from this commitment. And that's how I go back to my point, which is strike is the legitimate response to, uh, to get rights back. Now, to conclude my intervention, I would like to leave to my second intervention the role of each one of us here. But please, I promise you and believe me, our position is the right one. Thank you. Good morning, judges, my worthy opponents, and members of the audience. Thank you for your attention and consideration. During my speech, I will touch on two points. The first one is uh, the main reason why strikes aren't a legitimate solution for what's happening in public schools, and then the right solution uh, instead of wasting students' rights. In the first place, the teachers who initiated the strike in Morocco against the new basic system were the very individuals who, through their votes, empowered their unions to make such decisions. It is essential for these teachers and their unions to engage in constructive dialogue and resolve their issues internally. Disrupting the education of students should be avoided and finding a collaborative solution will not only benefit the educators but also ensure the uninterrupted learning of the students affected by these conflicts. Additionally, the argument that teachers are responding to unaddressed issues suggests that alternative avenues for resolution have not been exhausted. In a system built on communication and collaboration, it is essential for educators to engage in constructive dialogue with relevant stakeholders, including, education, uh, including educational authorities and policymakers. The claim that the strike is a legitimate response implies that it is the only recourse available. However, the interconnected nature of the decision-making process, as seen in the teacher's initial support for union decisions, necessitates a closer look at internal problem-solving mechanisms within the education community. Accepted? Uh, why do you think that the strikes would, uh, would have been happened if the dialogue worked as you already said? Uh, so the answer will be during my speech. As I said, uh, moreover, the recent revelation that teacher unions approved the new basic system without the knowledge of the teachers adds a layer of complexity and it prompts us to question the communication channels within the education system and the, trans uh, the transparency of decision-making processes. In conclusion, 
While acknowledging the concerns that challenges faced by teachers, it is imperative to question the legitimacy of the strike as the, uh, as, uh, the only visible response. Exploring, alterna exploring alternative solutions and engaging in open dialogue can pave the way for a more constructive and less disruptive approach to, address, uh, to addressing the issues within the Moroccan education system. Thank you. Dear members of the opposition, the problem is just in front of your eyes and yet you act as if you don't see it. So allow me to get some things clear for you. According to Article 29, the strike is a right guaranteed by the Moroccan Constitution. Moreover, if teachers don't strike now, they will keep on enduring and suffering for the next 10 to 20 years. Now, for the compensation for correcting exam papers, there was never one of the teachers demands what they really want is a better pay and better conditions for themselves. And for the additional activities, I get that they're beneficial for the students, but how will teachers manage to do them all? Let's not forget about the work and the preparations they have to do outside of work hours, and now that, I, that if they don't do one of their so-called duties, there's a list of penalties waiting for them. Thank you. My God, that was some nerves, dear opponents. Dear audience, I speak to each and every one of you right now. A smart man would, would use his mind to totally be rational, logical, than rather than screaming with nonsense, filling up the streets with noise and with nonsense and screaming, shouting for his rights. A smart man would wait his chances instead of protesting in the most mediocre ways possible relating us to the subject as strikes, demonstrations, etc., etc. A smart man would totally be human. That's it. Concerning the government whip, sorry. Uh, what hard work exactly are you talking about? Do you think public schools teachers to make any hard work? Is the hard work considered as absences or not coming to the sessions, not doing their work properly, not Given, not taking care of any students at all. Do you think is that a hard work? Strikes should not even be a thing. That's it. Thank you so much. Okay, then uh, provide them the conditions to work and see if they if they will uh, say, if they will do as you say. Okay, lovely opposition house. Did you notice how none of the government members have their kids taught in public schools? Well, the reason why is uh, water clear. Okay, dear audience, the teachers in the public schools suffer from other issues such as lack of equipment, which is supposed to be uh, provided by the government, which is not. As the uh, part-time teacher in our school, Mr. Rdwan El Khiat stated, I spent 1,000 dirhams from my own money just to do the photocopy for my students. And because of that, he had the students to give two dirhams per paper, which was a big failure since the students preferred to not have the papers over giving money. Uh, as well as there is as there is as well uh, the the risk taken as the part timer the other part timer Mrs Nezik uh, Fatih stated she wants uh, she wants um, she wants witness a severe fight between her students which included swords and knives and yet it's the teachers accused of big responsibilities who are accused. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is my last chance to save this happy nation. I think, in my opinion, teachers by Monday shall come back to their classes, hoping to find students who won't hate them for what they did. They will try to get back on the track, try to prove themselves, and most importantly, they will use this quote as, the, as their primary source of energy. It's never too late to solve anything. They can also try to they can also try to save students by unifying their voices and let us save this uh, nation and the growth of this nation by unifying our voice and using communication. 
Thank you. In a letter to the Ministry General Secretary reported by Kevin sources, the Secretary General said his department sees no issues with deducting salaries from teachers with an excused absence. <laughs> you call this fairness. Please, ladies and gentlemen, be honest with yourself and tell me if this is fair. Raise your hand. See, opponents, the answer is so clear. But the Secretary General and dear opponents forgot to read the law from head to toe. It is said if the government didn't afford the teacher's need, then t t the teachers have the right to strike without touching their salaries. My heart and I are defending the teacher's right to strike. If teacher remain silent, we would never achieve anything we hope for. We will never get the chance to develop as mentioned. And as I said before, that will lead to the downfall of our beloved country. Thank you. Lastly, the disruption of crucial exams. <laughs> Lastly, the disruption of crucial exams and a graduation ceremony, which is threatening their academic progress. It is essential to acknowledge the potential disruption of critical exams and graduation ceremonies, which are pivotal milestone in a student's academic journey, potentially threatening treating them, treating their academic progress and future opportunities, critics argue that these disruptions can have long-term consequences for students' academic and professional paths. Thank you. Um, leader of the opposition, you said nerves, really. Do you call countries' problems nerves? In the grand scheme of things, if teachers remain quiet, wouldn't that embolden the Ministry of Education to make more changes without considering teachers' rights or opinions? If teachers remain quiet, wouldn't that make this noble profession less attractive to new educators? If teachers remain quiet, wouldn't that lead to higher turnovers? And by the way, opponents, and it is highlighted in Division 2030, according to the website Morocco World News, that the Moroccan education quality will improve by 2030, which our house believe is not achievable unless we point out the issues now. Thank you. I extend my greetings once more. Dear House of uh, Government, make sure to note that we are not here to discuss the, un the unaddressed issues, but we are here to discuss the legitimacy of the way they respond. So to get back to, uh, uh, to our main point, the potential disruption caused by a teacher's strike extends beyond the immediate inconvenience. Students may face interruptions in their learning continuity, leading to gaps in their education. Classrooms routines and the struct, uh, structured lesson, lessons plans could be compromised, affecting not only the academic curriculum, but also the overall education experience. Moreover, the unintended, uh, the unintended consequences may include increased stress and anxiety among students who might find themselves caught in the crossfire of labor disputes uh, caught in the crossfire of labor disputes. The emotional toll on young, mind, uh, on young minds during uh, such periods of uncertainty can be profound, influencing their perception of education as a stable and reliable foundation. <laughs> 